back to St Albans Model Railway. Today we're going to look at this uh, turntable that I recently purchased from Brownies Models. Now it's worth shopping around for these, I picked this up for $350. Now it was in stock at another store, $500. So it's worth shopping around. Now it comes nicely packaged, you get everything you need to make it work. There's the controller, the turntable, with the bridge, all safely packaged in a foam inlay. It also comes with all the instructions you need, including a separate page which has a template on it. I actually copied the template, then pasted it on the layout where I wanted to place the turntable just to make sure I got all the holes and cuts in exactly the right places. Now here's my uh, A4 Pacific and uh, we'll just run it round uh, and change this direction. Now something worth noting here, if you have sound, I work in N-Gage and I haven't got any sound, so it's not a problem to me, but as the turntable reverses, there is a point where the tracks reverse polarity. So if you have sound, this could be a problem. Uh, for me, with the DCC, no sound, uh, it's no problem at all. Now I have noticed locomotives that have lights, they do just flash on and off, just for a, you know, half a second or so. Uh, but as I said, to me, that's no problem. Now the turntable does actually accelerate and brake. It doesn't operate at a constant speed. Uh, and the tracks can actually be programmed exactly where you've laid the tracks. Like they don't have to be at one, two, three o'clock or anything like that. You can put the track down and pretty much move the turntable to that exact position and then set that as a track. Now, it comes with a control box as I said. I prefer to use my handset, my DCC handset, and run macros. So I'll just demonstrate here. Here we've got the uh, Britannia and we'll back that up onto the turntable. Now as you can see the control box is indicating TR1, meaning it's in position 1. Now the little cab operator box on the bridge designates which end the track is at. So we're here at 1, I'll now enter into my DCC handset, macro 2. That will move the bridge to position 2. You can see TR2 is now flashing on the control box. When it reaches position number 2, the bridge will automatically stop, TR2 will stop flashing and become a solid TR2, indicating it's completed moving and it's in the correct place. Now we'll demonstrate how to use the control box. You need to press the go button then cycle through your numbers. Now I've only got two numbers here, so it'll just go from two to one. So we'll press the go, cycle through the menu to number one, and press go again. And off we go. Now that doesn't sound like any big deal, but if you had, say, 20 odd positions, you would have to cycle through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. Where using the macros, you can just type in mac macro position 20, bang, off you go. So, I prefer to do that. The other advantage is you don't actually have to be standing next to the turntable control box to operate it. You can operate it from the other end of the room and another DCC controller. So now you'll see TR1 is flashing, enters its position, it's now locked in, flashing stopped, and off we go. Now, it is a pretty large turntable. Uh, now, I specifically bought this because I wanted something that operated well and reliably. I wasn't really concerned with being 100% prototypical, and I do realise it's, it's really an American turntable, not a British turntable. But I'm now going to demonstrate how this, uh, this exercise comes in pretty handy. Now, we've got a Fairburn tank loco here with a Mark 1 composite brake van. 
Now, because this is the terminus here, this is handy for me, because I can turn this composite round and then tack it back onto the end of the train, so it's facing the right direction. And there's plenty of room for a large tank, plus the full Mark I coach. So my conclusions are here, I'm really happy with the way it works. Uh, I like the acceleration and brake of the turntable bridge. Uh, I've found it pretty reliable, I haven't had any problems yet, but I suppose the big test is the test of time. So I suppose that's something I'll report on in future videos. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Uh, at the end I'll include a, a link to the, uh, the catalogue web, the website and uh, also to Brownie's Model Shop. So he did me a great price on this. I couldn't even have got it cheaper if I ordered it from Walters myself. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Bye.